first, I want to hear just one of your favorite police time reservation stories. Oh, yeah. I know you got two or three. I've got a few. I got, they hit you in flashbacks, man. There was one I think of with this one woman, and uh, she was like a five foot nothing, 300 pound woman. <laughs> so a ball. Uh, just a sphere. A big, old, big, just old, a sphere. big old massive woman, dude. Yeah, big old women in San Antonio. Big, <laughs> big old woman, dude. <laughs> I arrested this chick a few times, like three times. I remember one in particular. She was huffing spray paint, or it was like she was huffing something while driving. So this is a repeated offender? Yes. Yeah. It was either like DUIs or drug charges. And there's like, like the tolerances on the res are like nothing. So this one, she was huffing something. She hit a no texting and driving sign. While she was driving, bailed out of the car and was trying to get home across the desert at night. And like, you got to think this is on a res, so it's like pitch dark. Dark. And so we go looking for this person. We don't know who it is in the middle of the desert. And we're sort of beat bottom along. And what happened was this, this fat woman fell into like a desert crevasse by like a riverbed. And it would have been like a, like she didn't like break anything miraculously, but it was like a 20 foot probably slide down. And she's like stuck in this little wedge of dirt. And I remember thinking, like, the fire department guys were there. I was there. I was looking at her. I was like, hey, do you guys got, like, a winch or something to get this lady out? <laughs> like, slow the winch down. Yeah, I was like, dude, there's no it's way. It's a crane game. You guys are like, go. Oh. She was but so, you one like, chase and it goes back. <laughs> she's so short and fat. I'm like, dude, I'm not carrying this chick out. I'm going to drag her up. Dude, I'm you, strong. I'm not that strong, I'm dude. I'm just imagining you guys, like, hillbillying that shit where you're like, all right, red, redneck ingenuity. Yeah. You wrap it around her, try pulling her out, and she's so heavy, it just cinches and cuts her in half. Hey, you guys got that thing from Jurassic Park that used to lower the cows into the water <laughs> after it? Clever girl. Clever <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that, that, dude, that one always sticks out to me. I think about it. Just like, imagine <laughs> she's so like short and fat of a person. Imagine her's like, I can get home. And she's like running across the desert and just pitch black. And she's high off like huffing paint and just like, like boom into a riverbed, dude. I just picture looking down. You have this like just balloon and this little face, just silver spray paint. Right <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank God it was silver. That way they could find her outside yeah. the highway. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. And then they're just lowering you. I just picture you. They like harness you and you have to go down and grab yeah. her. And then they raise you yeah, back up. You're yeah. the claw machine. It's like interstellar, dude. I start spinning with her. <laughs> right, so, so what's the weirdest thing you ever saw as a cop? Oh, man. This depends. Sometimes things hit me that I totally forgot about. Weirdest thing, dude. It's kind of like asking us, like, what's the weirdest thing we've seen in our career? Yeah. It's like, dude, I've seen some wicked shit in the last 10 years. It was just crazy mm-hmm. stuff, man. Like, just really weird situations that you roll into that, like, that doesn't prepare you for in the academy. I remember one call. It was like uh, a transgender woman had stabbed another woman at a house. I remember we're going a to the house. transgender woman is in, like, a dude a transitioning dude, to chick. Dude to chick okay. stabbed another chick at that house. So you show up to a house. There's always, like, chaos going on. You're trying to figure out what's going on. You start clearing the house. You get them out. But I remember being in, the like, the like just a weird situation. It's like you get into the <laughs> living room, and the living room on the – and, like, some of the res houses are just not kept up. The living room has nothing no. but, like, dog piss and dog shit all in the living room on this carpet. And I'm being, like, gross. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is gross, dude. And I'm like, where's our, where's our suspect? I don't want to step in any doo doo. Like, yeah, I remember that. Just being I like, this is, I remember thinking, like, I got to get out of here. This job's weird, man. Like, this YouTube thing really has I was to like, work. This God, please work, dude. This YouTube ball of cloud thing, please take off. Please take off. Yeah, I remember that. My, oh God, this is probably a little dark. Go um, on. Like, hmm. showing, uh, I was at uh, the, the room the other day, I was showing Cody, like, a video of, uh, like, somebody, like, that they had found or it was, it was not a body, but it was like just showing the, the aftermath of somebody who like, they, they basically found a dead body in a home Mm -hmm. and it was like two weeks later and they had just melted through the couch kind of thing. And it was like head dripped down to the stairs Mm -hmm. onto another couch, like that sort of thing. And he's like, I just show it to him like, damn, look at this. This is kind of fucked up. He's like, yeah, it's a typical week in policing. Yeah. Did he say people soup? Yeah. Yeah. He said people soup. Yeah. Yeah. See, it's so crazy, like, those stories, because mine are so different than that. Police stories, I'm like, man, it's so messed up, I could never do it. 
And then in my story, I'm like, yeah, it's just another day in yeah. Iraq. I think the Combat. nice thing is Bro, the, the like, nice imagine thing. it from my perspective. I did like real estate, then law school, and then YouTube. Like, yeah. Dude, I didn't see any of this shit. Well, to be fair, I grew up in Fayetteville, uh, so that was kind of a combat you did zone. Yeah, you did tour, dude. Pointy yeah. guns at a lot of people. That was your own war zone. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for your service. I think the, the weird thing is 9 11. <laughs> yeah. Fayetteville. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I joke around about that with like, a bunch of military guys. They're like, well, uh, like, have you ever served? I'm like, no, 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 no. Never did anything like that. But I did a 25 year tour in Fayetteville. Yeah. They were like, oh, damn. Like, God bless, God bless <laughs> your son. I'm like, yeah. God damn, I want to deal with that. I think that it's the seeing the horrors of what you live around, like at home. I think that's what gets me, you know? Well, that's what makes it more like for me, it was so far removed from everything. Yeah, yeah. you had like getting home and you're like, where's my gun at? Freak out. But for the most part, I'm like, man, pretty, very safe for the most part. Yeah, you're you know. separate completely mm. from that. Like, war is war. And mm. I was like, come home. I'm like, okay, I'm back in yeah. civilization. I'm not getting shot at every day. Yeah. And then when we talk to, like, the guests we've had on recently, it is that crazy distinction between, like, I know my experience is very rare. Uh, across the board, getting shot out more than twice. Mm -hmm. And then talking to individuals, like, you've been shot at? I'm like, oh, a lot. Like, fucking, I've been in... Probably like 40 or 50 gunfights. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> now that I'm like thinking about it, because it was every day. We were just like, yeah. oh, we're walking out. Gunfight. <laughs> I remember laughing my buddies because they took a sniper round. Yeah. And I got a, I was overhead cover and I couldn't find the sniper. Silly came and he's like, where'd you shoot back? I was like, I didn't know where the fuck they were. I just watched you guys run like bitches. Because <laughs> I fucking, yeah. you see fucking first squad. Just like, ah! <laughs> they just I start think, running down the way. I'm like, hey, where is this guy? <laughs> that was my favorite story, I think, from, you know, as a watcher of the podcast. It was a habitual. Yeah. Uh, he was he was on, he was talking about like uh, the, the video he showed his mom of like the fucking like way too close fucking airstrike. And like all the guys just start laughing. Like, well, why... Why is that funny? Because we're okay. <laughs> yeah, you're fine. That's you're not dead. Yeah. Always. And that's all it is. You're just like, I've told it too. It's like every time they're like, we're dropping the JDAM on that bridge to drop it. Everyone's heads down. <laughs> and then you wait. Because <laughs> you're like, 500 pounds? Okay, yeah, we're not. Li <laughs> we're watching this entire explosion go down. You're telling me they're dropping a bomb that's worth more than my net salary ever? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got to watch that. I'm fucking watching yeah. this. That is my entire <laughs> platoon's net worth. Yeah, yeah dude. Like, like, I've got to see this shit. <laughs> everyone. That's what everyone does. Just like showing force with like F-16s or whatever the f jets are. They're like, hey, do you want us to show force? And we're like, yeah, I don't even know what that means. Yes, neither, the thing yeah. is, neither does the enemy. No. Do you think they understand the combat capabilities of a fucking F-22 or whatever the fuck? Like the and all, <sighs> that's all they would do. They would just do a low pass and drop, fly up. And I was like, well, what's this mean? And we were like, oh, that's all of us. Just have no idea what a <laughs> fucking show of force with a flyover. Because we've done show of force with like. Did it ever work? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, they don't fuck around. Like, we've done, we would just engage. It'd be like, hey, we need a show of force yeah. right here. There's bad guy shooting. And they would just start dropping artillery. <laughs> but, okay. And then you see nothing. We started doing Death Blossoms. Uh, it is when we get engaged by an ID and, like, small arms fire. It's like, okay, we're just going to mm. shoot the fuck out of everything in this general vicinity. And that also stopped people returning fire. Like, yeah. we stopped getting weird. ID. Yeah. Like ID blast, everything would just instantly Dude, stop. Dude, if I was like, a terrorist nah. and I was trying to take pot shot you guys and I saw like a jet fly overhead, I'd be like, oh, dude, I'm going to take the day off. I'm going to head home. I'm going to head home for a little bit. <laughs> dude, we would have drive at night. You know what? I'm going to go home. I'm going to pray about this for yeah. a while and yeah. see if this was a good call. Yeah, listen, I'm not I'm not opposed to dying for a law. <laughs> <laughs> but today doesn't seem like a good day. You know what I mean? I'm going to go. I'm going to go. We're going to postpone the 72 version thing. Well, I'll be back. All right, it's going to happen. It's not today. 